Brady algorithms. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about what are called greedy algorithms. Let me review a bit. We are studying Hamilton circuits. We are studying the traveling salesman problem, which is the following problem. Given a complete weighted graph, determine the Hamilton circuit of least total weight. We have thought about an algorithm for solving this problem. It has three steps, the first of which is to list all possible Hamilton circuits. Now, in theory, that would be a perfectly good algorithm, but we've had a discussion about this and realized it's not really a practical algorithm because of how long it takes to carry out that first step. Remember, step one tells us to list all possible Hamilton circuits. How many Hamilton circuits are there? Well, in the recitation exercise that you will do, there are 12 such circuits. But if there were more vertices, there's going to be a lot. In fact, we learned this formula. If there are n vertices, then there are n minus 1 factorial divided by 2 possible Hamilton circuits in that graph. Now, that's a number that grows very large as the number n grows. And some examples are here to remind you. We quickly realize that the brute force algorithm is hopeless unless the number of vertices is very small. Now, if you really want to solve the traveling salesman problem, that's not really a satisfactory answer to say, well, we just can't do it because there are too many possibilities. So we need to ask, are there other algorithms? If we really want to solve the traveling salesman problem, we will need to use some other sorts of algorithms. And the three algorithms that we're going to learn are all called greedy algorithms. Now, why are they called greedy? Well, because in each one of these algorithms, you act as a greedy person might do. That is to say, at every point, you either grab the most that you can or you give up the least that you can. Okay? You should think at every step you're doing the greedy thing. We're going to learn about three algorithms. Here are their names. The nearest neighbor algorithm, the repetitive nearest neighbor algorithm, and the cheapest link algorithm. Now, I'm going to state those algorithms very briefly here in this lecture, but the way you're really going to learn how they work is to work them out in the examples that will be given in recitation. So here we go. First of all, the nearest neighbor algorithm. Here we're going to think of the weights as distances. So in the nearest neighbor algorithm, you need to be told where to start. So that's actually an extra piece of information that you will be given. Not only are you handed the weighted complete graph and told to solve the traveling salesman problem, you're told where to start. Okay, And so you start where you're told. You start at the specified vertex. Now, what do you do? Well, wherever you are standing at your specified vertex, you ask, what's the closest vertex that I can go to from here? And that's what you do. You go to the closest one. Now, after that, again, you go to the closest one, except you can't go back to where you already started. And in general, that's the rule. When you're at a vertex, you then go to the nearest vertex that you haven't already visited. Okay? That's how the algorithm works the whole way, except at the very end, you will have visited all the vertices that there are to visit. And then, of course, since you're trying to create a Hamilton circuit, you need to go back to where you started. Okay? So when all vertices have been visited, you return to the starting vertex. Okay, I think that's an algorithm many people would probably invent on their own. It seems quite natural. Given where you started, you go to the nearest place, and then the nearest place you still can, and so on. The next algorithm in our list of greedy algorithms is the repetitive nearest neighbor algorithm. So you'll notice it incorporates the nearest neighbor algorithm. In the nearest neighbor algorithm, you're told where to start. So how does the repetitive nearest neighbor algorithm work? It simply says, do the nearest neighbor algorithm starting at each possible starting vertex. So for example, in the Ohio State campus graph, you've got to apply the nearest neighbor algorithm five different times, once starting at Columbus, then again, starting at Lima, then again starting at Marion, and so on. 
So the first step in this algorithm gives you n Hamilton circuits, where n is the number of vertices. For example, if you apply it to the Ohio State campus graph, you will come up with five Hamilton circuits. Now, they may actually be repetitions. It may be that starting at Columbus gives you the same result as starting at Mansfield. Who knows? Okay, but you will have a list of five Hamilton circuits, and among those, then you pick out the one of least total weight. Now, if you're comparing numbers here, notice in the brute force algorithm, you actually try out all 12, whereas in this, you only try out five possibilities. Okay, finally, we come to the cheapest link algorithm. Now, this is the one that students find hardest to master. First of all, let me say, we think of the weights here as costs. We're using the word cheapest, so we'll think about costs. Now, what you do in this algorithm is you repeatedly choose from among the entire graph the cheapest unused edge that satisfies a couple of conditions. Let me explain, for example, how you get started. The first thing you're supposed to do is to look over the entire graph and you pick the cheapest edge, that is to say the edge of least weight, wherever it may happen to be. And then you choose the next one, that is to say the one of least weight, not the one you already chose. Now, you don't always choose them. Sometimes you reject them. I should point out, by the way, that in this algorithm, the edges aren't chosen in the order in which they will be used. For example, suppose you're planning a trip over to Italy. And in a sense, you're trying to pick out a Hamilton circuit. You know the places that you wanted to visit, and you need to decide what's the order in which you're going to do them. So, for example, uh, someone may have told you that it's really fun to take the train going from Florence to Venice. So that may be the very first thing you decide. You may decide, okay, I want to take the train from Florence to Venice. Now notice you're choosing an edge, and you're not choosing it in the order in which you'd use it. That couldn't possibly be the first thing you do on your trip. Another thing you're going to have to decide is how you're going to get from Columbus to Italy. So you might decide, well, I'm going to fly to Paris or, and then from Paris on to Italy, or maybe you'll, you'll do it direct. But at some point, you need to figure that out. And then maybe the very last thing, the thing you figure out just a week or so before you go to on your trip is how you're going to get to the airport, right? Even though that's the very first thing you need to do on the trip, it's the last thing you worry about. Okay, again, in the cheapest link algorithm, to begin, you choose the cheapest edge that you possibly can. After that, you choose the next cheapest and the next cheapest and the next cheapest, except you want to be careful that you don't do two things. The first is you never want to choose three edges that meet at the same vertex. You see, in a circuit, you don't want this to happen, right? So don't let that happen as you go along. So if you're looking at the next cheapest edge and you're deciding whether to use it or not, whether you're going to choose it to use in your graph, you ask yourself, did I make degree three? If you did, you throw it away, you reject it. Okay, the other thing that you want to avoid and that would make you reject an edge is creating a smaller circuit, right? You don't want a circuit that includes some of the cities and not all of them you want a Hamilton circuit that includes all of the vertices. All right, well, that's probably a pretty complicated one to understand just by listening to me talk about it. What you're really going to do is learn about this as you work it out in recitation. Now, to finish here, let me have a, a review of the traveling salesman problem algorithms that we have learned and that you're going to work with. On the left, I remind you, we had something called the brute force algorithm. And in theory, that will find the Hamilton circuit of least total weight. In practice, unfortunately, it's hopelessly inefficient. Now, the greedy algorithms work very well. As you'll discover, they work quite quickly and efficiently. But here's the problem with those greedy algorithms. They don't necessarily solve the problem. Okay, They don't necessarily find the Hamilton circuit of least total weight. 
Nevertheless, one expects that they often give an answer which is quite good. If it's not finding the hem of the circuit of least total weight, it's finding one that's pretty close to the least total weight. But since they aren't guaranteed to find the very best solution, we also call them approximate algorithms.